and welcome to Coldwater, Michigan, everybody, here at Bish's RV. This is my hometown store. My name is Josh, the RV nerd, and behind us, one of my, actually, my very first 2023 update for the Cherokee family of RVs. And they have gone through a, uh, a Kardashian level facelift. They look phenomenal. Um, I liked how they looked before. They had kind of a darker, more executive feeling inside. This, to me, feels like uh, a vacation sort of cabin interior. They've lightened and brightened the whole thing up, both inside and out. But it's more than just cosmetics. There's some serious content upgrades here, too. One of the things that caught me kind of by surprise was that they have swapped over to a tankless on-demand water heater. So there's no more uh, like, ooh, uh, I, you need to take a shower before me because I take longer showers than you because one of us might take a cold shower kind of thing. Basically, as long as you got propane and you got 12 volt, which considering you have solar on this thing to keep that battery topped off a little bit, you should pretty much have all the hot water you ever wanted, which I think is very cool. Now this model right here, like if there's one or two of you and it's just like you and a couple dogs or something like that, you don't need bunks, you're not worried about guests and kids or whatever thing. This right here is just a fantastic couples model that it's big enough to really enjoy at a destination for a long time, but it's still small enough and light enough that if you want to move it around, you could. I could see this working very nicely at a seasonal. I could see it working for someone who wants to tow and go. Although the travel access to the kitchen area is quite limited. Now we will show you the good, the bad with the ugly with everything in between as we go through these. And if you appreciate that kind of fair look at things before you spend your hard earned paycheck, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And let, I cannot wait for you to really Really dive into this interior this is beautiful and I mean if it gives you uh, any indication as to what I thought of this I opened the door and I'm like whoa like this is a major departure from what they were doing last year it actually it kind of takes me back to their their roots a little bit I like this I like the look of this it's lighter it's brighter it feels more like camping to me I, I guess I, I don't really know how else to say it now this model, one of the things that's just fantastic about it, it just gives us maximized window coverage over here on the door side of the RV, which is fantastic. Notice that set of USB plugs there between the seating in the super slide. Now the Cherokee group, they don't do um, a lot of theater seating. I don't really think they do any theater seating, but they do free floating recliners. And we're going to get to see that in action in a minute. And what's kind of cool about that is it puts you right over here next to a neat little conversation corner and straight across from the entertainment hookups and electric space heat and bunion burner. But speaking of cool stuff, let's talk about a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. Bigger air conditioner standard and centralized on these, which is kind of nice. Now these don't come with the television from the factory. Um, that's a, I think there's an option for it, but a lot of people I've noticed, even in like luxury fifth wheels, they're like, what if you took the TV that came with it from the factory and you got rid of it so I can install my own smart TV or whatnot? Like I've seen a lot of that happening recently. Um, so I, I don't know that it's wrong that it doesn't come with the TV. I do think this is a very entertainment focused floor plan. And I do think that someone's probably going to put a TV into it, but you know, kind of to each their own here. Um, the uh, the RV's Cherokees a lot kind of came under a, a little bit of criticism the last couple of years for kind of looking and feeling a little dark inside and uh, a little small, especially in their small little single axle wolf pup campers. So personally, I like the change. I like the update, and um, I like how Cherokee is always kind of you know they're, they're they're always listening, they're always paying attention. I didn't dislike their decor before, but I do think I like this better. Then again. Maybe it's just because it's new and I haven't seen it before. Now, uh, up top here, you've got your central AC vents, but this right here is a uh, an extra subwoofer basically built into the ceiling. And opinions on that can vary. I've heard some people say, man, it sounds real good. And I've heard some people say, eh, it's okay. I, I it probably, I'm sure it's not like it's a Bose audio system or anything, but uh, I'm sure it's not bad. Now up here, we got that skylight letting in some extra ambient light, but you might notice how I have that shade pulled really helps knock down the temperature. I had a customer actually take one of those heat sensing lasers and, and just open and close this. And it like dropped the, the heat coming through here by like 30 degrees on a hot summer day, which I thought was pretty cool. Now, before we get over into the kitchen, you might notice there's another venting skylight over here. There's a reason for that because if the way that they did this, they made this super open and appliance friendly in the kitchen. Like you see those, those power outlets and just a nice big open chunk of counter space. But it, they went with a maximized window, which means it doesn't have a way for heat to exhaust otherwise, which is why they have a vent up there. Now, interestingly, that is not a powered vent, but wouldn't you know it, they ran some juice right next to that thing. So 
Uh, if you wanted to piggyback off like a light or something like that, you wanted uh, to upgrade that to a big XL vent fan, that would not be a, uh, a difficult thing to do there. One of the things that I'm enjoying, by the way, about this lighter decor, it makes my job of spotting and pointing out power outlets way, way easier because that is something that when it's kind of black on black, gets to be a little bit tricky sometimes. Now, um, I'm right up next to it here. I should have pointed this out at a better angle, but right next to the entertainment center, I'm going slow. You got this little guy. Well, that's like one of those little um, interesting kind of uh, entertainment focusing accent lights for like evening time. Uh, you know, when the when the lights go down in Georgia and you're sitting in here in the dark, it, it'll just kind of give it that extra little neat feel and function and look. And again, maximize windows on the door side. Those open for airflow. Now, the sofa side windows open for airflow. The slide side windows do not. I want to make very clear when I start saying windows open for airflow, I want you to know what you're getting and uh, you know what you're not for your money. Now, so one of the things you are getting here, though, is I think one of the coolest uh, big drawer systems under Dinette you're going to find. And notice when I have that folded down into a sleeper, it makes it easier to see that power outlet that sits just below the tabletop. These are all sealed edge press membrane counters. And when you start diving into that island, you start realizing that this thing actually has some pretty solid drawer coverage. And with the pantry next to that big 12 volt compressor fridge, you've got some very respectable kitchen storage and prep space here. Um, it, this one's kitchen, it seems to either be a love or hate kind of thing. Now you may have noticed there uh, under the side stands by the sofa where there's those power outlets, there is open pocket storage there, but those little armrest bolsters kind of cover that up. And again, the free floating recliners, it is kind of nice that you can recline individually and shift your weight individually in those chairs without jiggling each other around. One of the other things that I thought about is um, what if you just want to change that sofa out? What if you want something else out? The, the fact that those are free floating chairs makes it so much easier to do that. Actually, let's open up the floor to you folks at home. What would you do with this space? Would you leave the recliners there? Would you take them out? Would you put like one giant lazy boy in like a, a nightstand or something? Or ta night table? Side, ta side table. You know what I mean, right? Like, would you put dog crates or something in here? What would you do with that space? Me? You know what I would do with it? I'd record a video and sweat my face off doing it. Now, I also wanted to turn off all the lights because it has a nice lighting package, but even without it, I still like the look of it in here. And if you're feeling a little blue, you can sort of kick up the uh, <laughs> the cool factor a little bit. Now, flipping around the other direction here, um, they the idea behind this floor plan, I think, in part, is to give us the biggest living space they can possible in the shortest, lightest, uh, shortest length and lightest weight possible. Now, sometimes that means we have some accommodations. I, I was very happy to see some excellent space around that toilet, by the way. You've got a one, two, three octopus fight club over there, which you would think would be 24 coat hangers, but it's actually only six. Thankfully, this is awesome. This is a class leading feature right here. Uh, the the, uh, the full like 11 inch XL vent fan up there really providing superior airflow. Cherokee is also very good about giving us, actually, let me open this up, pardon. A very nicely sized, big Lipitorage storage galorage cabinet right there. And you may notice uh, a nice big sink inset into this too. That does mean limited counter space, but it also means you got a nice place to wash your hands. And that right there is the controller to the tankless on-demand water heater. So that's where you can set the temperature uh, of that thing. As I back up a little bit, we see over here on the left, radius shower. Uh, if you notice, my head's all up in that skylight. This RV has a six and a half foot tall ceiling. You may notice at least though, it does have like a, uh, a, a true floor to ceiling shower surround panel, helping uh, kind of keep the wall panels protected from the shower water that sprays off your body. Sorry, sorry. I don't know why I said body like that. That's creepy, Ugh, creepy Uncle Josh. Now moving up front into the bedroom here, I know I'm all up close and personal on this thing. This just gives me a much better shot of looking at over here off the door side of the RV. You've got this nice tall toothpick but breeze window um, that does have a pull down shade. This would be a, uh, a pleated style shade, whereas in the living room you may have noticed the zebra roller shades. 
Here's a weird thing. We're looking at the standard skin series. Cherokee also does the black label edition with the fiberglass skin and the um, uh, Smexy frameless black windows. In the black label edition, that tall window that we just looked at, it will actually not open for airflow, which I think is a weird thing. Why? I don't know. I've just noticed that. Now, by the way, what do we call this wood tone? I don't know why. The name Honeycomb kind of just popped into my head. But lately I've been like, I've really been enjoying cereal and I don't, I haven't eaten honeycomb cereal, but maybe the name popped in my head. Okay, let's let's talk about this. In case you're kind of curious, I see this, people ask this question all the time. Household plugs and then what is this other thing? Well, it's a two plug USB charging port, but it can also receive and charge a drive portable Bluetooth speaker, which is something that's just not included with these campers. In case you're curious, TV hookups over there on the wall, and you can probably discern by looking at it. But in case you were wondering, this is a 60 by 74 Camp Queen or Short Queen, which is, um, you know, the choice, the official mattress um, selection of Ted, Ned, and Fred, the Bed Goblin Union, the guys that live under your bed and will bite your toes if they hang off the bed at the end of the night. Now, flipping around the other direction in road mode, I wanted to take the time to close the slides up. I mentioned earlier how I think this RV is best used at a destination. This is really the primary reason why. So from the bedroom, uh, you know, we can get in there to the bathroom, obviously. Now, there's a second bathroom door from the main hallway, which can fully swing open. I'm just at a bad angle to do it. And obviously, we can get to the bedroom from the main door. But that is really the extent of the useful functional stuff. This is what I call nap and crap travel accessibility. If you want to stop and make a sandwich, you're going to need to find a place where you could open some slides or something like that. Uh, that is really, I think, the one significant Achilles heel of this floor plan. And I'm not going to gloss over it just because it's an inconvenient truth. Now, it's kind of funny because the exterior was not facelifted to near the in, uh, level of the interior, that full, like, you know, wood panel swap out. Really what they did here is they took their previously, like, kind of dark gray panels and they just swapped them out with white, including the nose. But it makes the RV feel so fresh and new by comparison. Personally, I'm a fan. You've got uh, like a dark navy blue accent uh, stripe on the top in the middle. The bottom is still like a dark black, kind of like you'd see here on our stone guard up front. But um, I don't know, overall the color palette, it works for me. And the thing is, if you notice, there's nearly no like sticker vinyl graphics on this thing. There's very little on this that can like get weathered. Um, and it's, it's essentially like a, a painted uh, exterior. Now, if we look over here, you see that we do have a uh, hot, cold outside utility shower next to the, uh, the one and only Stinky Slinky hookup station. So this is a single sewer point uh, camper. I'm gonna point you down toward that just uh, briefly there so you get the idea. Now, uh, over this way, this is one of the more interesting updates that I saw here on the 23 season. And that is that they've swapped over from a six gallon gas and electric water heater to a, uh, a propane on demand water heater. Now those things have come a long way. And if you're not familiar with them, I get it. It feels weird, it feels different. There's something that when they first came out, they should not have been uh, used in the RV industry. But these newer Furion varieties, basically you can use them very similar to how you use your hot water at your house, where you can mix the hot and the cold valves and you didn't used to be able to do that stuff. I think it's pretty cool, it's pretty exciting, but that's my two cents and I will be, I tell you, I will be very eager to hear from actual owners as this footage ages. Please, if like you have one of these or you have experience with one of those uh, Furion water heaters, leave me a comment and let me know what your experience has been with it and let everybody else watching this video know your experience because it's one thing for me to say I like it, it's another thing for an actual owner to go, yeah, I used it. It sucked. <laughs> Looking in the front compartment there, that's where your um, you know, uh, solar charge controller is going to be located. Now, because the water heater, they basically standardize it in that front driver's corner on a lot of their models. It's not a full true pass-through, but it's still a decent chunk of underbed storage, I think. Now, they went uh, with dual power awnings on this one, which I think is really smart, because if they didn't add that second awning on the face of the slide with all those big door side, campsite windows overlooking your site, the uh, <laughs> your, your shaded patio space would be a, a little bit of nothing, effectively. What is that, like an eight foot, 10 foot awning, something like that? By the way, a couple interesting things. Down here, we do have ourselves the propane cooker 
hooker. And as long as we're down there, let's take a little bit of a look at the basement. What you'll see is these have enclosed holding tanks just to give them a little bit of extra protection. Then there's this guy. It took me a minute to figure out because in broad daylight, it doesn't really do you much. But what this is, it, um, <laughs> I know exactly how to describe it. Uh, for the other people like me that were born in the early 80s or, or maybe in the late 70s, that is the Thundercats logo broadcast station. That basically, did you see that little wolf head picture, just like the Cherokee, you know, wolf emblem? It will shine that down, like under your campsite, just to give you like a, a neat little, um, you know, lighting graphic, basically. It's something a little bit different, kind of cool. I don't know, I just like little, little things like that. You got the uh, leash latch over here for drunken Uncle Gary, which theoretically you could also use to maybe tie down the four-legged furry friends. You know what else is cool about that? If it's supposed to be a windy squall tonight or you're not sure, you could also just kind of like chain down, secure down your patio furniture so it doesn't go blowing from here to Timbuktu. We still have that uh, cargo rack on the back, spare tire thankfully becoming standard on these. That's something I'm very glad to see. We still have that LCI Insight Bluetooth backup camera, but up and to the left of that, you may recognize a portable telescopic ladder mount. Now that's something that Cherokee hadn't done previously. Last year, they took a lot of flack because they actually removed all potential for ladders on their RVs. The 22s, you couldn't even add one after market because there weren't anchors in the walls. Well, that little upper mount gave them the ability to get us up there to the roof to take a look around, which is something I haven't been able to do a lot on Cherokees. Now, something I didn't talk about inside is that air conditioner you saw, that is a 15,000 BTU standard. So Cherokees by default come with the bigger, better air conditioner. You don't have to pay extra money to upgrade that. And by default, they normally come with a 50 watt battery tending solar package. But you notice how there were two panels up there. That is the, uh, the factory like double, <laughs> uh, double panel uh, uh, extension that you can get. That is easily the saddest, corniest Sir Mix-a-Lot reference I've ever made. I really didn't commit to that, did I? So that's kind of my take on it. What I see is good, bad, and ugly, and everything in between. It's the first of our 23 Cherokees. What do you think of the, <laughs> the Kardashian level facelift on this thing? Do you like the color palette? Do you hate it? What is the one thing that you love on this RV, and what is the one thing you would change given the opportunity? That's the kind of stuff that I would like to know. Leave us some comments, and uh, if this is the future, what Cherokee's bringing us this season, I'm gonna have a lot of fun covering them because this is the, going to be their look, uh, you know, in Gray Wolf, in Wolf Pup. And I think this decor, that lighter decor in the little bitty Wolf Pups, ooh, it's gonna look good. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and stay tuned because there's a lot of good stuff to come. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.